Hi again to the next quick and dirty video about uh, elements of design within composition in photography. The next one is going to be diagonals. Again, that's pretty explanatory, but how do you use diagonal leading lines or diagonal, uh, for want of a better word, shape within composition in a photograph? And how can you make it work for you and to make that photograph a little bit stronger? Let's have a look. Hi again, so this is number what, three in this what mini series of uh, elements of design within the composition of a photo, um, mainly concentrating on landscape photography. And the next one is actually diagonals, but I've decided to put two together here because these things are so short and sweet anyway. So I'm gonna do diagonals and curves. So like the last two, what this really is about is showing you how to use these implied shapes or lines. Um, often as a collective, many of these things put together are known as leading lines probably a, a phrase you're familiar with but those lines can be in all sorts of shapes sizes and direction so leading line is kind of a bit of a, an overall um, description I suppose but when we start looking into um, landscape imagery itself and then you have those um, different types of line and element of design pointed out to you it then you know becomes obvious in the mind and you can go out there and consciously use them so that's the point of these uh, short ones so diagonals now this I've put that I have in front of us is a really um, obvious one, really. Uh, it's a, what we would traditionally think of a leading line leading us right the way through the image from the foot with these eye anchors down here with these main rocks up through this, the River Dee here in Aberdeenshire. And we've got a lovely sort of um, final point to our destination, which is this building right up here. But we're using, if I point them out, diagonals. So if we go from the central point and follow the line of the river out there and again down here. So we've got two converging diagonals bringing us to the center point all right and then if you look really hard that is also complemented and a lot of this is a little bit in the peripheral vision but we've got some diagonals of some of these smaller trees okay there's a diagonal of a branch down here all right so in a way it's all working together if I run over all of them to bring us to the, the same destination okay and it's worth considering that when we're looking through the viewfinder or the back of the field camera, whatever you're using, and uh, composing in that way. And once you've done that and you start applying these sorts of things, you get much stronger images. Um, if you want to get really deep, and I'm being, I am being pretty deep here, we've also got some um, opposing diagonals within these rocks here. Um, a line there, a line there, a line there, a line there, which um, aren't really leading anywhere, but they do add a little bit of sort of... Um, uh, sort of tension if you like because they're opposing to the main leading lines diagonal lines in that image um, another use of a diagonal an unusual one is this where we've got a traditional shot with a, with a level horizon at the top third but when this shot was taken it was intentionally done that the uh, row of changing huts here was put a diagonal just really to break up the what would almost be monotony of of consistent horizontals so you could use it like that and you know again if you look in there deep you've got repetition i haven't covered repetition yet and rhythm have i but it's in this image too so rhythm and repetition the repetition of the huts and rhythm of their spacing and you've also got additional um, diagonals of course and you've got um, regular verticals as well so this image when you look into it and you know what you're looking at and you understand how to read photographs in a different way, which is what this sort of mini series is all about off the back of my claim about things not being subjective, you start to notice those things and then apply them as I've already said. So there's two um, examples of use of diagonals. They can be um, a little bit unobvious like this, adding a bit of tension to the overall image, which kind of works because as I said, that breaks up the monotony of the uh, horizontals. And you've got a more traditional use of diagonals here, converging, converging lines, bringing us to a central point all right so what about curves now curves are quite interesting because they can be really obvious like this so this is a shot of the cob at Lyme Regis only about 20 minutes from where I grew up um, so it's got um, some meaning for me this place and it's also quite well photographed but here we've got a curve of course of the cob which is there man-made but then I got very lucky didn't I we've got the curve of the round the rainbow falling um, on the point and of course when I composed this I made sure I positioned myself so we brought the two together so there's a really strong use of curve there 
Um, same place, but a different shot, same day. Um, this is a more traditional shot you'll see of this place. And again, we've got a lovely S leading away from us. Nice wide angle. Um, make sure you focus in the right spot so this isn't out of focus and it, it won't look quite right. And then leading us out through the, the image. Nice curves there. Um, another traditional use of curves. This is um, North Devon. Um, this has a similar sort of shape to the people that photograph um, Doodle Doodle Door in uh, Dorset will be um, familiar because you've got a sort of a curved beach like this usually when shot from the most um, common vantage point and then you've got the door over here this is um, a similar sort of thing um, as we curve through the image starting here and we curve all the way through and then we meet up with the rocks and we we come out to sea taking us out to a destination all right so there's a use of curve there which is also a little bit more obvious Note other little things here in the composition which are purposeful, the use of just these three rocks. And they're sat neatly in that little spot there to break up the monotony again of the vast open space. Um, another few basic rules observed with the horizon in the top, just over the top third actually. So yeah, not a particularly an exciting photo, but it follows a lot of the rules of composition so it seems to work. You've also got a mirroring curve here of this wave coming in if you if you really look for it. All right. I guess what I'm really doing here is, is demonstrating to a lot of people who haven't done this before how to read um, composition. I guess that is actually a, like um, you could be taught to read um, a musical composition on sheet music, right? Only certain people can do that because they've learned how to do it. Um, most of us can read um, written the written word because I'm taught to, I'm just showing you how to read a photograph. And, and in this particular case, landscape photos. And so that once you can understand how to read them, you can write them. Um, less obvious, shot from Glencoe, I don't have many from Glencoe, but here where the two clouds were overhead and there was a gap between them and the shot and the sun pierced through, it left us with a curve look of light going up the mountainside, which I was really lucky to get because it just could, you can follow it either way, it can come down and then it hits these trees. I remember when I took this shot actually and um, the, the sun was, and the, well, the weather, the cloud, the sun, whatever was doing this all day where you get this beautiful, um, mainly clouded, but you get these breaks where the, the sunlight would catch, cast through like this and hit certain areas of the landscape. But I'd sat there for about an hour waiting for it to hit these trees because all I was hoping to do was just to have these highlighted and maybe a bit more of the foreground. But I just got crazy lucky when it did do that. But at the same time, it gave me this. And um, I will admit that I did enhance it slightly. So it's not um, put in there, but when I process this I did um, dodge and burn in order to really bring it out because you can imagine on a flat raw image it wasn't that, that obvious but uh, yeah I was really pleased with that image and, and the nice horizontal down here breaking up the foreground as well. I was in two minds whether to crop up to that point but it, it just wasn't enough breathing room beneath the trees so I, I left that but uh, yeah that's an unusual use of curve right just gives the image a little bit more of interest. If you imagine if that wasn't there it'd still be quite pretty I suppose but it wouldn't be the same, would it? Um, and I don't think, um, another quick, I covered this um, image in a different, when I was doing horizontals and verticals, because we got, you know, horizontal and, and the r r rapid, sorry, the repeated verticals on the jetty. But to a degree, you've also got a diagonal there leading us to uh, a feature point in the, in the composition. Um, curves, you know, is a famous place. You can see where curves are coming in there. You've got both the combination of curves and um, converging diagonal lines. Yeah. You see, these things are the structures I talked about in that long video. They, they are there. They, they are recognisable. They are objective. They're not subjective. They're real things. And so you can try to use them. Here's an unusual photo where very subtle curves are used. The curve here. I took this shot into the scrub because I saw... A performance in the scrub I saw a dance I saw sort of movement and there's lots of curve and movement and it's almost like these different plants are, the light helps because it caught certain areas of it almost sort of work together like there's some sort of performance going on here's a hard to spot diagonal again leading us from this bottom right corner through this is Dartmoor into the uh, ray uh, sun ray burst area there not particularly good photo of that but. and how about the subtleties of these diagonals Again, coming from the bottom corner, 
bringing us into the center and then allowing us to follow on this little sort of rugged path out to sea. So you see how you build composition by using elements of design, points, curves, horizontals, verticals, and converging diagonals. Yeah, got it. I hope I'm helping. I'm hoping through this, this drought that we've all had to face of not getting out there with our cameras as much or at all. I'm hoping that I can help you fill your time by learning um, a lot of stuff which you don't normally learn. There's plenty of magazines out there. You can learn how to use a 10 stop all day long. You can learn how to set your settings on your camera, which is a bit nonsense because it really does depend on the light around you. But And you can learn where to go and you can learn what lens or camera to buy, possibly. But this sort of stuff isn't taught enough. You know, this is the real nuts and bolts. So I hope you enjoyed it. And the next one is, as I look over my shoulder, hold on. Uh, look at my list. What is it? Hold on. The next one is distinct and irregular shapes. And I'll throw in use of triangles in that as well. So um, we don't do too many. So we'll do um, shapes and triangles, bundle that together in the next one. And uh, you'd be surprised how many photos we reuse for you through this. And then uh, that should be um, quite revealing, really. Okay, that's it. Bye for now. Take care.